ready for writing. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I do. Thank you. All right. Would you state your full name for the record, please? Randall Owen Sorrells. And you have told me that you want to take a break somewhere around 1045. Right. You have, you're running for state bar president and you have some activity you want to do. Right. And when do you think you'll come back? Uh, when, as soon as it's over, and I don't know if it's over at 1 or 1.30, but uh, as soon as it's over. Okay. How far do you have to go? Uh, downtown. We're in downtown. Do you know how far it is? Uh, I'm guessing where it's at. Uh, it's probably at the Marriott. Okay. Um, I don't remember if it was with the petition or when it was provided. Looks like it was probably with the petition. Okay. Other than what was provided to you with the petition, did you have anything else uh, in relationship to the underlying case? No. You have no depositions? No. You have no, and I'm talking either electronically or in hard copy, you have no copies of pleadings? No. You have no correspondence with the client? No. You have no correspondence with the other side? No. You have literally not one single document in relationship to the underlying case? Correct. And what was the underlying case? The name of the case? Yes, if you know it. Your law firm was sued in, since 2011, correct? Yes. Did you handle the defense of your law firm in the suit? Uh, I don't remember. It was either me or one of my associates, but I was certainly involved. When the lawsuit was filed, did you take an effort to preserve documents? Yes. What did you do? I uh, saw so if there were any documents that uh, were available. So as of 2011, you all came up with zero documents, zero emails, zero communication, and zero correspondence? Correct. Even with correspondence and communications electronically between you and the opposing side? Right. Okay. At some, time, at some point in time, you became aware of a sanctions proceeding in the underlying case, right? Right. <clears throat> at some point. Mr. Hasi and a, the lawyer that was remaining after you became, were subject to a, what, $2 million sanctions, right? I believe that's right. And then allegations were made shortly thereafter that you had something to do with that, right? Not that I know of. Or your firm. Not that I know of. Not that you know of. When's the first you became aware that uh, there were allegations made that you were involved? Uh, it would have been much later. Okay. At the point you find out about it, did you make any effort then to maintain files related to the underlying case? Um, we didn't destroy any files, but we had what we had at that point in time, which was nothing. And then where would your files for the underlying case, Mr. Hasse's patent case, be stored? In it the hallway? Been, it would have been stored in the file cabinets and, yeah, in the hallway. File cabinets in the hallway. And you are testifying that you did, in fact, have certain hard copies of the underlying patent case at some point in time. Yes. You do remember that, right? Yes. You have a present sense recollection today of having what? Banker boxes right. related to that case? Right. And we've already established you know that there was at least more than one such banker box. Right. Do you know, could, could have been five banker boxes? Could have been. Okay. Could have been 10? It could have been. Patent cases are usually voluminous in their documents, right? Often. Was this a voluminous document case? There the underlying lot, patent There case? were a lot of documents, and I, don't, I just don't remember what was printed out and what was not printed out. Okay. I yeah. want to go back to... We've established, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you maintain multiple boxes of paper documents that, such as what's sitting in front of you on the Hasi underlying case, the patent case. At one time, that's right. right. You were the lead counsel. Uh, when, Ms. when we withdrew, we gave the entire set of files to Mr. Hasi and the lawyer who continued to, on with the case. All your electronic files as well? No. Where did those go? Those went on to some type of electronic storage disk, and we may have kept copies as well of uh, some things in the file that were duplicates. Okay, where did that electronic storage disk go? Uh, I believe it went into storage. Where's went into storage? What location is that? 
That would have been uh, downstairs on our first floor. It's a room? Yes. Okay. And what are these on disc? They would have been on, they look like boxes in my mind. I don't, they were an older type. I don't understand, they look like boxes. Yeah, I don't know if they're called hard drives or what they're called, but it's not a disc. And what happened to those? They were lost in Hurricane Ike. What year? 2008. So you told me the electronic file went downstairs in boxes. Right. Also went with that was the hard copy, paper copies? Yes. Okay. And you're telling us all the paper copies was lost as well in the Hurricane Ike? All papers that were downstairs were lost in 2008, and that would have, if th those files would have been there as well. Although my guess is it wasn't a huge file. Which is actually at a level below the bayou, right? Doesn't that flood fairly often? Um, well, it has as of recent. How many times has that been flooded since you've been in this building? I don't know. So you took... <laughs> In fact, you've tried to just get rid of this case by filing summary judgments, right? Um, we have filed summary judgments. I'm trying to see what you're trying to tell me. You said, I've never paid any money in a lawsuit. Right. Right? In all the cases that people right. have sued you. I've never written a check. You personally have never written a check. Correct. But your firm might have for those same things that you're involved in, right? I don't know. The answer is the firm has never written a check. An insurance company has never written a check for anything I've done, ever. Insurance company? I thought you don't have insurance, malpractice. Uh, on your disclosure, you haven't, you haven't never, I don't even know if you've answered disclosure, but you're certainly required to say if there's an insuring agreement, right? If there's an insuring agreement that covers this, this in incident. Well, no, if you have insurance, Whatever the rules insuring say. agreement. I, I, don't, I don't agree with you, but I'm telling you, we have not invoked insurance in this case. Let me ask you if you invoked, is there an insuring agreement? I don't know. Do you have malpractice insurance? At what point in time? From 2005 to today. I'm sure we did. You, Mr. Sorrells, do you have malpractice insurance for you uh, the as firm, an individual? The firm would cover me. The firm would cover me? Who's it with? The firm, I don't know. So... It is fair to say in the last six years, you have never d produced a copy of an insurance policy that insures you for malpractice, right? That's fair to say. Okay. And why would you not produce a copy of an insuring agreement as required by the request for disclosure? Well, I don't agree with your question. Well, tell me why you don't agree with it. Uh, if we choose not to invoke insurance, then it's not applicable. It would be... It, it, the, <laughs> Really, that's your theory on not producing documents and disclosure? Uh, I'm not going to answer that. Why not? Because it's, it's, a, it's a harassing question. You're instructing yourself not to answer? Uh, you know you're harassing me. I'm not harassing. I, just, I think it's incredible that you think you can pick and choose when you produce documents. Okay. It's and you're harassing. running for state bar president, right? It's harassing. You yeah. want to lead the bar, and yet in your own okay. personal case, you want to hide documents, true? Okay, I'm going to end the deposition now. I appreciate your time. Is there anything else you want to ask that's not harassing? End the depo? Yes, sir. On what basis? Uh, you're harassing me. You feel like you're harassed? Okay, do you have any other questions you want to ask I asked, me? do you feel like you're being harassed? Yes, sir. And why is that? Uh, because of the, the tone of your comment. I'll let the judge decide. Do you have any other questions you want to ask me? Because I've got gonna, lots of questions. Today. I'm going to end the deposition now. Unless you're you going to stop the depo? Yes, sir. On what basis? Because you're harassing me. How am I harassing you? Okay. Do you have any other questions you want to ask me? I have many questions. Right. You didn't want to give this depo, right? Okay. You've resisted it. So now you want to halt it because you have some bar event that you want to go to today that I've already said I would accommodate you? That's what you're doing? Okay. Deposition's over. Is it? Are you going to walk out? Yes, sir. We'll I go. think why don't we just wait and call the judge? Uh, we can have, have the judge read the transcript. Why don't we just video. wait and call the judge and see if you can? Because we can get him on the phone. I'm sure he's very accommodating. I, I, I'd like the judge to see the video and see the tone of your question. And the see tone of my question? Yes. And how I'm you're asking, asking you questions about the production of an insurance policy that you're required to give me. You also told the judge last week you had not a single document at all to give me. Right? And yet you attached documents to a motion for summary judgment in the last seven years, haven't you? So the surprising question to you is, where did you get those documents to attach to a summary judgment? You want to help me with that one? 
Okay, deficit is over. You're not going to answer that question? How did you get documents to attach to a summary judgment? Call the judge. I'm not ending this depot. I'm staying on the record and I'm calling this judge. He is not just going to walk out of a depot. Kimberly, call Judge Wyman. Stay on the record, please. Give me the time that this gentleman has walked out of the room. Arrogant. This is the reporter. It's 10.20 a.m. How long have we been on the record? 55 minutes, 49 seconds.